Bilger. Your research is centered on designing novel surface chemistries with energy applications. Can you tell us a little bit more about what these applications are? Sure. So you are right, our research focuses on understanding and improving surface chemistries in relation to energy conversion systems in order to improve their performances. And we apply these studies to different technologies that are existing or that are to be developed. These include fuel cells for electricity generation from fuels and electrolysis and thermochemical fuel synthesis. So for example, to, to generate clean fuels like hydrogen and syngas from water and CO2 splitting solid state batteries which suffer from interfacial problems as well as metal oxidation in structures that go into nuclear energy as well as oil and gas exploration. They suffer from corrosion related degradation and we try to understand and improve those structures. In a nuclear reactor, the environment is so harsh. You have radiation damage, you have high temperatures, you have corrosive fluids, and these all stress the material. And the aspect of degradation that we focus on includes corrosion and a sister problem that's called hydrogen embrittlement. So one example in that area from our recent work is that by performing first principles calculations, we could go beyond what is normally used and empirically tested in the nuclear materials field. And this, this study for us, it was very exciting, but it also attracted attention of different industries, like for hydrogen transportation that is considered by utilities in the US, as well as oil and gas network, which suffer from hydrogen embrittlement. And we have expanded our projects to contribute to those fields as well. You have a theoretical background, but now your research is more applied, more experimental. What made you switch from one world to another? So my formal training was on nuclear energy systems and in particular artificial intelligence techniques in order to predict failures in nuclear systems. But during my postdoc I had a chance to move into this new field of materials for energy and I have since then pursued this field. And we do both theory and experimental work. As you do it, you don't think if it's easy or difficult. I just was very interested in this topic, so I tried to learn and contribute. But when I think back, yeah, I don't think it was easy. But you don't think about if it's easy or not when you're doing what you want to do. It's just fun along the way. I think I was open-minded enough that I dared to change and explore different fields and that's a characteristic of many colleagues that we have at MIT. As an assistant professor of the MIT, I need to ask you about this institution because its, it's brand is so huge outside the US. What are some things we can learn from the MIT so that we can apply them in our daily, in the research we do here. Yeah, it's a very open institute. I think this is one of the strengths. It's very open and the people working in there are very motivated, willing to share their ideas and work together. And I think this contributes a lot to our success. What kind of professional skills is the MIT looking for in researchers? There is no written rules, I must say. We just learn the rules as we <laughs> work through the process. But there are important elements that I have observed, at least, that I could share. And these include that the work you do has to be novel and the impact that you have with this work should be recognized by other experts in the field. So it should be important enough that your colleagues speak for the importance and novelty of your work. And again, by novel, it goes back to this openness about new ideas and, and ability to explore without being concerned if it's easy or difficult because it's just new, you're excited about it, so you try to do your best. <laughs>